In this video I'll explain what an explanatory mix method design is. I'm Jarek and the aim of this channel is to help you develop and conduct research that will make an impact. So if you like this content, like the video and if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. The explanatory mix method design is the one that prioritizes the quantitative phase of your study, which is then followed by the qualitative phase. So in other words, it's also called an explanatory sequential design. The aim of this second qualitative phase of the study is usually to explain some uh, trends or findings or patterns found in the first quantitative phase. Sometimes to explain outliers, so something that is not quite the same as the rest of the data. In any case, usually it's to explain some of the findings from the quantitative phase, hence the name explanatory. So when should you consider using this design? Well, firstly, if you are quantitatively oriented, so you feel you are strong in this type of research design, and if you have time to, to have these two phases in your research. So these are the obvious uh, choices, the obvious situations when you should consider this design. And also if you have a finding in your data that cannot really be explained with your quantitative data. So in this case, this decision may be quite spontaneous. So you may not have planned to have these two phases, but on uh, analyzing the quantitative data, you realize that you cannot explain some kind of pattern and you'd like to recruit some of the participants and talk to them, for example, during an interview. With regard to philosophical worldviews and assumptions, Cresswell and Clark, in their book on mixed methods research, I'll put the link in the description, suggest that since we have uh, two different phases that involve uh, completely different research traditions, so to speak, so the quantitative and qualitative strand, we should consider adopting two worldviews or uh, two uh, kinds of philosophical assumptions. So for the first phase, which is quantitative, we should uh, think about something like post-positivism. And for the second phase, which is increasingly uh, focused on uh, getting these deeper insights or personal insights into the studied phenomenon, we should consider something like constructivism, because we are interested in how the individual participants uh, construct the meaning. As for the research procedures, in the first quantitative phase you collect and analyze your quantitative data. And then as you analyze your quantitative data, you're finding these trends that I mentioned that you would like to explore in more depth. Uh, you are getting ready to conduct your qualitative phase. So you are designing your qualitative data collection methods. You are uh, conducting your purposeful sampling so you know who you want to ask. Uh, these questions that you prepared and uh, in the following stage you're collecting that data and analyzing that qualitative data. Finally you are interpreting the results and you're uh, investigating whether and to what extent these qualitative data helped you understand the quantitative data and then finally you reflect on the whole uh, data, on the whole process and what you understood uh, from the data that you collected. An important thing to mention is how you report on these findings. So I would argue that the majority uh, suggest that we have uh, two different, two separate sections. One section for quantitative results and this section would be followed by the qualitative results. Uh, but I sometimes like to mix them a little bit and present the quantitative results and occasionally chip in uh, the qualitative results just to strengthen my argument. So it will depend on you and how you decide to organize your chapter or your results section. There are certain challenges with uh, implementing this kind of research design. So for example, you need to decide who you want to recruit for your second uh, phase of the study and how you are going to recruit them since they are the questionnaire participants who are supposed to be, at least in theory, anonymous. Certain problems may also appear if you are uh, preparing a research proposal simply because at this very early stage you don't know who you are going to recruit or what you're going to ask, what you're going to do in your second phase of the study since, since it's an emergent design and the second phase will really depend on the first phase. 
and finally you need a lot of time since this is a sequential design so we will need to have a lot of time to implement these two uh, separate phases of your study. But the main advantages of this design to me and the reason why it's worth considering using it in your study is one, uh, the fact that again your data is really rich because you are collecting both qualitative and quantitative data so something really uh, that is characteristic to uh, whatever mixed method design you choose and secondly the fact that it is an emergent design so the fact that the second phase depends on the first stage uh, to me is great because again it means that you are really responsive to data to what you find and in my opinion the final results are much more in-depth and much more interesting.